Alex Kirshner, we have survived the regular season. We've come out in one piece. Uh, profit zone, perhaps gettable, but we're going to have to be on our uh, on our P's and Q's here during the playoffs. This is this is winning time. This is the championship season. Richard Johnson, this is the championship season indeed. Uh, I was 3-3 three and three last week. Started out 0-3, then my teams got it together. I think they understood the precariousness of the situation. Sure, the magnitude uh, of the situation, yeah. Absolutely. I am 45-49-2. That's almost 48% on the dot for the year, which still not where we want to be, but within striking distance of where we would be happy to be. So I think what's important is that we play our best ball in the postseason. Indeed, I am. I went six and five in week 17. I'm 56, 58, and four on the season, 49.5% against the numbers uh, spread in total. So, all right, let's do some playoffs. Let's get some bread in the new year. Uh, Colts and Bills, first game of Saturday, Saturday afternoon. Uh, you're, feeling, you're feeling Bills Mafia? I'm feeling Bills Mafia. I acted early, got them at, uh, at mi minus six and a half, which I think that's moved to around a touchdown since I've done that. I think it's moved by a half point at most places. Uh, I can't believe that I'm saying this about the Buffalo Bills in a playoff game or that the Buffalo Bills are in a playoff game, though they, of course, been it, have been in a few in the last couple of years. Uh, but I think Josh Allen is going to carve these guys up. I have been more wrong about him than probably any draft prospect since you and I have been covering college football in the NFL last five, six, seven years. Uh, it's not that the Colts defense is that bad, but I think it's that uh, the the Bills offense and particularly Josh Allen's ability to move and to get out of the pocket and to run downhill is going to be an issue. And, and you factor in that Stefan Diggs at the top of his game. I think he might be the best receiver in the NFL right now. Uh, and I just like it for Buffalo. I also think that it's notable that the Colts are running the ball well when they have it, but I don't know how much running the ball is going to help you. Uh, when you are playing a Bills offense that is so explosive that they tend to turn games into shootouts. And if you, you know, great if Jonathan Taylor runs for four yards a carry, but if Phillip Rivers doesn't make some plays, I'm not sure it's going to matter. And I'm not sure he's going to do that. Alex, I'm actually, I'm going to Riverside you here and take the Colts plus six. Uh, right. I think the Colts may be able to keep the lid on this Josh Allen offense. Colts play uh, pretty soft, play a lot of cover two. Uh, and that limits the deep ball. And I think if they can execute that, if they can really make the Colts drive, or excuse me, if they can really make the Bills drive, uh, I think we may have an opportunity here for the Colts to cover the number. So I am again, apparently, doubting Josh Allen. I'm going back to the well there, and I am taking the Colts against the spread here. Understandable. Guess we'll see. Uh, we'll see who's right. At least somebody in this household is going to win on that bet. <laughs> Uh, Rams and Seahawks out in the NFC West also on Saturday. Uh, I'm on the under at 42 and a half in this game. Rams defense is incredible. I think it has emerged over the last month as probably the best defense or really the whole second half of the season as the best defense in the NFL. Aaron Donald speaks for himself. And I really think it's interesting that Jalen Ramsey, after maybe it felt like his reputation as an elite cornerback had maybe like just an inkling, maybe last year slipped. Uh, that was not right. Uh, and I'm sorry because you're a Jaguars fan, so you you might not like to hear me say that. Uh, but he's at the top of his game. He's, he's the best doing it right now. Uh, and I just think that it's going to be very, very difficult for Seattle to run up the totals to which it became accustomed earlier in the season. Uh, and also the Rams are going to be quarterbacked for their part by either John Walford or, or Jared Goff. And uh, given that Seattle's defense has improved, not a lot there uh, in the way of Rams points either, I don't think. Yeah, I, I will be joining you in the underplay, uh, but I will be taking the Seahawks against the spread as well. Seahawks minus four and a half. Don't really know who's going to play quarterback in this game for the Rams. Not really sure it's going to matter. Uh, John Wolford, uh, a guy who was a CPA or financial professional like three weeks ago, uh, changed his LinkedIn and, and suited up for the Rams in week 17. Uh, Jared Goff has a messed up thumb on his throwing hand. Don't like either of those options in this playoff game. I'm going to take the Seahawks minus four and a half in addition to taking the under. I certainly like the Seahawks side of that spread a lot more than I like the Rams side of it. So I applaud you on that. Uh, the Washington football team and the Buccaneers. Uh, congrats to Washington on making the playoffs uh, as a sub 500 team. Good for them. Uh, I do not think that they can cover in this game. I'm on the Buccaneers minus eight. I have seen enough of both of these uh, offenses to have a pretty good understanding that Tampa Bay has a much uh, better proclivity to actually scoring points than Washington does. 
Washington plays good defense. Love Chase Young. Think he is one of the great young players, one of the great players, period, in football. Uh, but I just don't think they can score enough given how awful their offense is. And I don't know if it's Alex Smith, if it's Taylor Heineke. I like kind of like with the Rams. I just don't know if it matters. Like I don't know yeah. where the where the points come from against that defense. If they can find them, God bless them. But I'm not sure that Washington can score more than 14 points in this game. And as good as that defense is, if you can't do that, uh, you're relying on on a lot of good work uh, against Tom Brady, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, various running backs, etc. Yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of that game, I'm taking it under. Speaking of that game and speaking of finding points, uh, I will be taking that matchup under 44 and a half. Uh, I do think Washington will be able to get to Tom Brady and make Tom Brady's day uh, a little bit more frustrating than it otherwise will be. Uh, Tom Brady struggles, as many quarterbacks do, with pressure coming down the chute. That defensive line that Washington brings uh, gets pressure up the middle, force Tom Brady out of the pocket into the waiting arms of one Chase Young, like you intimated. Uh, but <laughs> again, I don't know where Washington's finding points in this game at all. So yeah, I'm going to take under 44 and a half in that one. I don't think either of us would be surprised if Washington scored like three or six or seven in this game, maybe 10. Um, if they can somehow get it into the 20s, that is an amazing, amazing effort for them. I don't see it happening. Uh, Ravens and Titans moving to Sunday games. Uh, I'm on the over at 54 and a half. Two offenses at the top of their games right now. Lamar Jackson has come off the COVID list and uh, cleared his bowels that night in Cleveland, and he is playing at something pretty close to the MVP level that he showed in 2019. This has been a top three offense in football the last month, right up there with the Packers and those Bucks that we just talked about. Uh, and I just think that they're going to score. And, and I also think that Tennessee not only can score, but moves at a pretty quick pace. They like to snap the ball quickly, more quickly than most teams in the NFL. Neither defense has really stopped the run. I think Derrick Henry could get a lot of yards in this game. I think Ryan Tannehill could do something approximating what he did in the playoffs against uh, the Ravens last year. So I just expect points. And we also, for the record, have noted that Tennessee's defense soft right now. We saw what Deshaun Watson and his depleted Texans did to them last week uh, and nearly upset them. I just see there being a lot of points in this game. Yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, I, I am staying away from the total, but I will take the Ravens minus three. I bought the half point here. Uh, so I'm taking some juice here. I'm taking some bad juice at minus 127, but whatever. I'm not going to get beat on half a point here. The Ravens are playing incredible football the last few weeks. And I know they've been beating up on bad teams. And I know that the Titans sort of figured them out last year. But I think the Ravens are going to be salty in this game. I think the Ravens are going to be ready for it. I think the Ravens are going to cover minus three. Fair enough. Let's see how it, let's see how it shakes out. Uh, st still on Sunday here, the Bears and the Saints. I am taking the Bears plus 10 and a half in New Orleans. The last four weeks of this season, these teams were almost dead even in both offensive and defensive EPA, a stat that you and I both like uh, that we think judges how well a team is actually playing, expected points added per play. They have been, for the last month of the year, playing at a very even level. Now, it's not to say that this is actually a toss-up game. It is not. Drew Brees and Michael Thomas are playing for the Saints. They were both not for much of or all of the last month of the season. Uh, it is in the Superdome where the Saints historically and where home teams in general uh, would be expected to play a lot better. But even so, this is not the Brees that we've always known. I think the Bears defense is average enough to hold its own. You don't know exactly what Michael Thomas will be in a year that's been very bizarre for him. And Mitchell Trubisky, I'm, I'm not a true believer, but I think he's been above average for the last month or so. And if he can just be passable in this game, then 10 and a half is a lot of points for the Saints to have to cover. But you, Richard, are going to tell me why I'm wrong, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm taking the Saints minus 10. Uh, funny enough, I have it at pretty good juice. Uh, 10 and a half was plus 105 and I bought the half to minus 10 at minus 105. So I'm taking the Saints, taking the Saints to cover minus 10 so that I don't get screwed on that half point given the math of the game. Yo, the Saints are rolling right now and I understand that a lot of people, to, you know, Drew, Drew Brees' arm, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. The Saints defense is pretty outstanding. It's one of the most complete defenses in football right now, probably one of the top three or five. The Bears have not beaten a good team in the last month. They got smoked by the Packers on Sunday afternoon. Uh, I, if you look at Mitch Trubisky's passing chart in that game, it's a joke. He barely even threw the ball beyond 10 yards. I just, 
I don't see it. I think we're going to get the, the Mitch Trubisky that we are used to seeing, not the one we've seen over the last month who has dominated, you know, the Jaguars and played well against the Lions. Richard, I have to be honest, that was that was a pretty compelling case. I don't feel very good about my Bears plus 10.5 bet, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, the night cap, the weekend cap on Sunday, my Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the Cleveland Browns. Uh, call this an emotional hedge if you want. I call it. I've watched the Steelers over the last month. <laughs> I'm taking Browns money line plus 220 in this game. I don't make a lot of money line bets, as uh, familiar watchers of this show will know. I think I've only made one or two in the NFL this year, and I think they've both been successful. Uh, but... I just think that even despite the Browns COVID situation, Kevin Stefanski not being there, maybe more importantly, Joel Batonio, their excellent guard, not being there. The Steelers offense is so inept <laughs> right now that I just don't, I just don't see it. Um, now it is true that they almost beat Cleveland last week with Mason Rudolph at quarterback and without TJ Watt and Cam Hayward and the Steelers not really caring about the game. That is true. Uh, that is that is a point well taken. But Ben Roethlisberger, with the exception of about 14, 16 really good minutes two weeks ago against the Colts, has looked like a Big Ten West quarterback for the last month. Uh, Baker Mayfield had a tremendous season. I think really was underrated by a lot of people, including me, to cop to it, honestly. And I think they're going to move the ball. I think they're going to score some points. I think that they're going to... Uh, I, I don't know that they will win the game. I think that it's close to a toss-up, which is why I feel like it's a good value bet at plus 220 uh, to get the Browns on the money line. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm right. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I don't like the fact that uh, Kevin Stefanski, their offensive play caller, won't be there. I don't like the fact that uh, they're missing their left guard against one of the best fronts in professional football in the Steelers. Mm, I don't that's like fair. the fact. Don't like the fact that the Browns uh, had a tough time with a Steelers team last week that was basically a JV Steelers team with a preseason game plan. Uh, I'm taking the Steelers minus five and a half to cover and win here. I'm not going to overthink it here. Uh, I, I am taking the team that I think overall is better uh, and, and not just the one that's that's sort of hot and sexy in the moment right now. Uh, I, I think the Browns are doing are dealing with too much COVID stuff and all that sort of stuff uh, for this to be a happy uh, swan song in the playoffs here. Fair enough. I think the one thing that really could blow up my Browns money line bet is if Cam Hayward just and Stefan to it feast on the middle of the Browns offensive line. That could be the case. We'll see. Uh, but I'd be happy to be wrong because that would mean that my my professional football team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, was moving to the second round of the NFL playoffs where we have not been in a while. We haven't been in this round in a while. So I guess we'll see. You know who will be in this round next week, though? Me and you. See you next week, big guy. Fantastic.